Hi guys, my name is Brady and today I'm going to teach you how to light this scene. Okay, no, that was a bad joke, but we're on a field trip to Home Depot and we are going to light this scene using only $30 worth of lights. And I actually don't have the lights, so I'm looking for the lights, so stay tuned. These are the lights that we're going to be getting here. Just I think they're like $10 each um, and all you need is bulbs. So that's all, all we're going to do here on this field trip and we're headed back to we are back at the classroom now. My name is Brady and we are using just $30 worth of lights today to get this really high quality looking scene. That's right, just three of these guys. So to make a scene that's really fun for us and really entertaining, I decided a fort would be a great idea. So hard hats went on, fort construction went in progress, and immediately I ran into the issue of with our limited lighting setup, it wouldn't be possible to bring lights in to the fort and really light from inside the fort. So immediately I compromised and said, hey, how can I get some nice soft light in the fort without bringing anything in? And I thought to make one of the corners of the fort just white bed sheet, so acting as our diffusion and our roof for the fort. And speaking of which, I guess that's a great time to bring in our first light, and that's my Home Depot Reflecto Dish 5000, which isn't the name, but it would be pretty cool if it was. But I knew that given the really tight space, I wanted to make sure that I got enough contrast and light wrap as possible. So knowing that my camera is shooting directly in the entrance of the fort, I wanted to make sure I still got that far side key look wrapping across the face. So I took the first light and I put that on the back right side of the fort. Now, you're starting to really get this nice wrap and roll off, but one of the downfalls with using these lights, these work lights, is that output definitely is an issue. You're not gonna get a crazy bright amount of light coming out of that. So since the light is cutting through this diffusion and you're already losing a little bit more output or brightness from that, I just took one more of the same ones, clamped it to the same light stand, and now I had two lights shining in on that same spot. And I'm really starting to get a nice wrap and that really nice far side key look that we always wanna go for. And again, that's also where you really see that white bed sheet corner coming to handy, acting as a really large soft source in the fort. So that, that way almost a quarter of the fort is a really nice big soft box. And now that we've talked about the output of these lights or lack thereof, one thing that I really wanna mention and you should note down if you're using these budget lights, that it's best to have full control over your scene's lighting situation. So either shooting at night in a location with no windows or if there's windows and it's daylight, black out the windows. That way you've got full control over the lights in your camera settings and you're not fighting any ambient daylight spilling throughout the scene. So now looking at the frame with both lights on the back right side of the fort, I was even really impressed at how nice this roll off looked across the face given the circumstances and I was really shocked and happy with it. But I did notice that on camera left of my face and of the scene inside the fort, there was definitely a lot of shadow and it just looked dark. Um, and to bring that up, I wanted to add one more light. So another light that I added was a Home Depot Reflecto Dish 2500, a little bit smaller of a guy. And I put that on the front of the fort on camera right. So I put it in this location because I didn't want to sandwich in my or sandwich myself in with having lighting on camera right and then a fill coming from camera left because then everything would get a little bit flat and you'd lose that roll off that we're going for. So by keeping it on camera right, just on the front side and a little bit dimmer, I was able to wrap that light around my face a little bit more. So now you've got the key light coming in on the far side and then as that falls off and we get to the shadow side of my face right around mid, mid center of my nose line, I've got that other light kind of coming in and wrapping just a little bit more around my face just to help that roll off nice, smooth and easy across my face and smooth and easy across the scene. And one thing that I did add is one of those five in one discs to the diffuser that was inside. I took that and put it in front of our light. So that way it softened it up and it was a really large source still yet again coming from this front camera right side of the frame. And then because at full strength, this light really started to wash out a lot of the shadows almost too much more than I wanted to. So one extra tool that I got was just a dimmer switch, one of the cheap ones from yet again, Home Depot, and plug that in. And then I had full control over how bright the light was outputting. And I played around with it and I found a nice safe home right around 25% output. That way it's still helping with that roll off a little bit more, but not enough to where it's washing out all of the shadows and we're losing our depth and contrast. And then I just wanna note that having a light kind of on the front side of the frame that might be a little bit more in my line of sight gives me a really nice catch light or helped with giving me a nice catch light in my eye, just a little twinkle. 
So that way that five in one disc was reflecting in my eye on the front side. So if I was looking away, it would still be on that front side of my eye. And adding a catch light just adds a little bit more attention screaming kind of like, hey, look at me, this is where your look eye contact is here because naturally we wanna look at eyes, but if we can't see any eyes because it's going into dark, then it makes it a little bit more difficult. One thing that I did forget to add is that these lights tend to naturally just be very warm, both color temperature and heat wise. So be cautious that this lamp may be a fire hazard as well, but more so on the color temperature side of things, this light kind of sat right around 2700 Kelvin, a really, really warm tungsten light. So to counter that, I set my camera's white balance to 2700 as well to make it really like a daylight or natural pure white light coming through there. And I'd have a little bit more control. But this ultimately is my lighting setup for this scene with just really low budget lighting. And I'm probably pointing out the obvious when I say this, but when using budget lighting, a fort is not the only option. I just really wanted to set out on this scene and get creative with it to show you guys that it ultimately doesn't come down to high end lighting. If you're on a project and you have very low budget lighting and can't afford all of that, it's not just about the gear. As long as you diffuse the light, get control of your lighting environment, give your subject a far side key, you can still get a lot of really, really great quality products with something as plain and simple as this. So one more time, let's take a look at every light that we added in, in order, and see how our final product panned out. This does conclude our class today, and the words of wisdom that I am leaving you with is to not get discouraged over lack of lights or lack of gear. And I'm speaking from experience when I say this, that so many times I myself have gotten so discouraged that I don't have this or I don't have this. And what it's gonna come down to is really digging into your creative roots, your creative DIY roots, and learning to work with what you have because the best products and the most uh, impressive products that you're gonna come up with are gonna be when you get extremely creative. Say, I only have this, what can I do with it? If you're over there thinking, well, I don't have that, so I can't do anything, you're gonna be stopped in your tracks, you're gonna be stuck in your head. Whereas if you've got one of these things and you get creative with how you're using it, you can come up with a really, really cool product that you would be proud of, a lot of us would, would be impressed with. So that's my words of wisdom for you today. I hope that you found it entertaining, enjoyable, uh, useful, educational, so on and so forth with the wonderful adjectives. But if you did find any of those adjectives as previously listed, go ahead and please hit that subscribe button, the like button, the little alarm bell. If you have not, uh, share it with a friend, do whatever you feel so inclined to do. And until next week, I will see you then. Class is dismissed.